what's the symbol for electric current? Um, I. Good. Either capital or lowercase. Do you remember what the units are for current? Yeah. Good. Now, amp is another important unit that has a, uh, subunits. What are the subunits for amps? was a, a good answer. That's not what I was going for, but it's a good answer. How, how did you come up with volts per ohms? Just from the equation. Of yeah, well, yeah. yeah, you don't seem too happy about that, but that's actually a very good way to figure out units. Using equations is a very good way to figure out units. Well, um, we know that current is voltage change over resistance, so that would be volts per ohms. Okay. All right, so that, that is a good way to come up with units. I don't think those are the most intuitive units, however. Remember, what does the current tell us in words? Well, the current tells us the rate at which charges are passing through a certain area. The current tells us the rate at which charges are passing through a certain area. That should help us to think about what would be logical units here. Coulombs per second. That's right. Yeah. It's not just the number of coulombs, but the number of coulombs compared to the amount of time that, it, that has passed, which will tell us the rate at which the coulombs are passing. So if we remember what current means, that can help us to remember the units. What is the symbol for resistance? Um, resistance is R. Yeah, capital R. What is the unit for resistance? Ohms. That's right, and the symbol for ohms is this, this is a capital omega, I guess because omega sounds like ohm. Yeah. And you were already using that when you were coming up with some alternative units for amps. Okay, all right, so like we've talked about each week, the big challenge in the course is to try not to get buried under the flood of new concepts each week. And the only way to do that is um, every week or every day if possible, it would be a good idea just to sit down and just do what we just did. Write down all the concepts, all their symbols, all their units, for the key ones, we need to know whether they're vectors or scalars. Everything on the board right now is a scalar. And you really have to try to do that almost every day, or otherwise all the concepts just get confused with all the other concepts. After today, we'll have a, a bunch of new concepts about magnetism, and that should also be added to the list. Okay. The resistors have a physical characteristic that's called the resistance, while capacitors have a physical characteristic that's called the capacitance. Do you remember from those videos, what is the symbol for capacitance? We use a capital R for resistance. Do you remember what the symbol is? Yeah, capital C. All right, and here's one uh, that most students do not remember, but I'll ask you, do you happen to remember what the units are for capacitance? I don't think I've talked about that too much in that series. Um, most students don't remember that. The unit for capacitance is, did you want to take a guess? I was going to say like, coulombs per volt just from the equation, but. Well, that's, a, that's another really good answer, again. <laughs> Once again, that's not what I was going for, but that really is a good answer. So you're, uh, you're thinking like a physicist in that respect, so that's good. But what's the equation that you're using there? Um, C equals Q over V. Right. Well, actually, I'm really glad that you remember this equation. So you picked up on the most important thing from that series of videos. So yeah, we could solve this for C, and we can see that the units for capacitance must be in coulombs per volt. Mm -hmm. Great. Now, there's a special name for that, which is farads. So that's just one more name that we need to memorize. The units for this are capital F, which are farads, but it is good that you realize that a farad is coulombs per volt. One thing that maybe wasn't apparent, I uh, didn't stress enough in those series of videos, is the analogy between resistors and capacitors. Here's the information for resistors. Their symbol is capital R, here's their unit, and this is the key formula that we use for resistors. Well, capacitors are another type of electrical device. Here's their symbol, here's their unit, and this equation kind of plays the same role for capacitors that Ohm's law plays for resistors. Last time we saw that there's three variables for resistors, voltage drop, current, and resistance. And we tried to figure out each of those in each circuit, where there's three key variables for capacitors, charge, capacitance, and voltage. And just like we can use Ohm's law to figure out the variables for resistors, we can use this to figure out the variables for capacitors. Last week we saw how we can replace resistors in series in parallel by equivalent resistors. You, they, I don't talk about that in the video that you saw, but there's also equations for replacing capacitors um, with equivalent capacitors um, based on a sum formula and a reciprocal formula. So there's some analogies between resistors and capacitors, although obviously 
there's some, some important differences as well. Okay, so once again, this little exercise we just went through is something that you want to try to do on your own whenever possible, just so that the different concepts don't just start blurring together in our minds.